Hello welcome back today's topic we are discussing is fruits of drug administration Most of the drugs can be administered by different routes Drug and patient related factors determine the selection of routes for drug administration The factors affecting route selection are characteristics of the drug emergency routine use site of action of the drug condition of the patient age of the patient effect of gastric pH digestive enzymes and first pass metabolism patient's doctor's choice routes of drug administration can broadly classified into local routes and systemic routes Local routes it is the simplest mode of administration of a drug at the site where the desired action is required In this systemic side effects are minimal. It includes topical route, intraarterial route and administration of drug into some deep tissue. In this route, drug is applied to the skin or mucous membrane at various sites for local action. Sites include oral cavity as suspension, for example, nystatin as as a cream, as ointment and jelly, for example, 5% lignocaine hydrochloride. As a spray, for example, 10% lignocaine hydrochloride. through ghee tract as tablet that is not absorbed for example neomycin for sterilization of gut before surgery through rectum and anal canal as an enema administration of drug into the rectum in liquid form then as a suppository administration of the drug in a solid form into the rectum then to eye ear and nose as drops ointments and sprays for infection allergic conditions etc for example gentamicin eye ear drops through bronchi as inhalation for example salbutamol ipatropium bromide lastly through skin as ointment cream lotion or powder for example clotrimazole for cutaneous candidiasis second one intraarterial route this route is rarely employed it is mainly used during diagnostic studies such as coronary angiography and for the administration of some anti cancer drugs for example for treatment of malignancy involving limbs third one administration of the drug into some deep tissues by injection for example administration of triamcinolone directly into the joint space in rheumatoid arthritis systemic routes drugs administered by this route enter blood and produce systemic effects it is composed of enteral routes and parenteral routes enteral routes it includes oral sublingual and rectal routes Oral route it is the most common and acceptable route for drug administration dosage forms are tablet capsule syrup mixture for example paracetamol tablet for fever omeprazole capsule for peptic ulcer are given orally advantages of oral route it is safer cheaper painless convenient for repeated and prolonged use and can be self administered Disadvantages of oral route not suitable for emergency as onset of action of orally administered drugs is slow It is not suitable for or in unpalatable and highly irritant drugs unabsorbable drugs drugs that are destroyed by digestive juices drugs with extensive first pass metabolism unconscious patients uncooperative and unreliable patients patients with severe vomiting and diarrhea sublingual route the preparation is kept under the tongue the drug is absorbed through the buccal mucous membrane and enters the systemic circulation directly for example nitroglycerin for acute anginal attack Advantages of sublingual route quick onset of action action can be terminated by spitting out the tablet bypasses first pass metabolism self administration is possible disadvantages of sublingual route it is not suitable for irritant and lipid and soluble drugs drugs with bad smell and taste rectal route through rectal route drugs can be given in the form of solid or liquid first one suppository it can be used for local effect as well as systemic effect for example endomethacin for rheumatoid arthritis second one enema retention enema can be used for local effect as well as systemic effect the drug is absorbed through rectal mucous membrane and produces systemic effect for example diazepam for status epilepticus in children next is parenteral routes routes of administration other than enteral route are called parenteral routes Advantages of parenteral route onset of action of drugs is faster hence it is suitable for emergency it is useful in unconscious patient uncooperative and unreliable patients patients with vomiting and diarrhea disadvantages of parenteral route require aseptic conditions preparations should be sterile and is expensive requires invasive techniques that are painful 
cannot be usually self-administered, can cause local tissue injury to nerves, vessels. Tile liquids and gases are given by inhalation for systemic effects, for example, general anesthetics. Advantages, quick onset of action. Dose required is very less, so systemic toxicity is minimized. Amount of drug administered can be regulated. Disadvantages, local irritation may cause increased respiratory secretions and bronchospasm. Injections. In Tridamal root, the drug is injected into the layers of the skin, for example, BCG vaccination and drug sensitivity tests. It is painful and only a small amount of the drug can be administered. Subcutaneous root, the drug is injected into the subcutaneous tissues of the thigh, abdomen and arm, for example, adrenaline, insulin and more. Intramuscular route, drugs are injected into large muscles such as deltoid, luteus maximus and vastus lateralis for example, paracetamol, diclofenac, and more. Advantages of intramuscular route. Absorption is more rapid as compared to oral route. Mild irritants, depot injections, soluble substances and suspensions can be given by this route. Disadvantages. Aseptic conditions are needed. Intramuscular injections are painful and may cause abscess. Self-administration is not possible. There may be injury to the nerves. Intravenous route, drugs are injected directly into the bloodstream through a vein. Drugs are administered as bolus, single, relatively large dose of a drug injected rapidly or slowly as a single unit into a vein. For example, IV, renitidine in bleeding peptic ulcer. Slow intravenous injection, for example, IV, morphine in myocardial infarction, intravenous infusion, for example, dopamine infusion in cardiogenic shock, mannitol infusion in cerebral edema, fluids infused intravenously in dehydration. Advantages intravenous injections, bioavailability is 100%, quick onset of action, therefore, it is the route of choice in emergency, large volume of fluid can be administered, for example, intravenous fluids in patients with severe dehydration. Highly irritant drugs, for example, anti-cancer drugs can be given because they get diluted in blood. Hypotonic solution can be infused by intravenous route, for example, 20% mannitol in cerebral edema. By IV, infusion, a constant plasma level of the drug can be maintained, for example, dopamine infusion in cardiogenic shock. Precautions of intravenous injections, drug should usually be injected slowly. Before injecting, make sure that the tip of the needle is in the vein.